asked you point blank and you told me everything except what was most important. Because it was the opposite of important. Craig tried to kiss me and I slapped him. It was stupid and forgettable. And, be and besides, there was enough drama that night with Johnny and Dusty. I didn't want to add to that. You and I, we have always been nothing but honest with each other. Did Craig change all the rules when you were up there with him in his hotel room? I wasn't with him. Look, if this is the way it's going to be, how you're no, going to react every time we talk about Craig, do I don't want to tell you me. anything. You act so irrational every time we talk because about him. Because he's dangerous, Meg, and he's, he's using you. To get to you. And, because and you're letting I it walk happen. In here and you're sitting next to the guy in your underwear. You can forgive me for being a little irrational. I was sick. You were vulnerable, and he saw an opening, and he pounced, and he's building up to something. He's building up to, to something big. To what? I don't know, but I'm going to keep my eyes open. And you can call me irrational if you want, but I am never going to stop fighting for you. That's not going to happen anytime soon. Think about it, Meg. What was Craig's real motive? To make a pass at you or to make sure that I knew that he made a pass at you? You know, I, I thought the whole thing was pretty pathetic. When men like Craig try to come on to a woman, it's never about the woman. It's about reassuring himself that he still has the power. He knew that you wouldn't tell me. Because there was nothing to tell. I love you. He wanted for there to be a secret between us. That's what he wanted. He knows that secrets do damage. All right. So maybe I, I shouldn't have played into his hands by not saying something. Oh, look, I'm... I don't want to fight with you anymore. I, I, um, okay, from now on, if Craig does anything else, no matter how pathetic you may think it is, promise me that you'll, you, that you'll tell me about it and that you'll share it with me and that we'll deal with it together. Okay. You made your point. Look, if I'm going to go to work, I better get started. Okay, you're not going to work. Come here. Come on. I'll get you to the couch. Oh, no. I'm, I'm fine. You are so not fine. And you are not going to that hospital. Unless you're going to get need, yourself a room. I need a minute. Just a minute. Okay. All right. Look, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll go out, okay? I'll get some air and give you some space. Come on Promise me that while I'm going... That you'll rest and that you'll think about what I said. If you think about believing in me for a change. Oh, I believe in you. But I'm going to war with Craig. And I need you on my side. And I don't want you caught in the crossfire. shoes. I didn't know you were looking. What, uh, what's going on? Nothing. I just came down with something. I don't know what, and, uh, it was kind of brutal for a Looking while. There. contagious? <laughs> this from a guy who gets shot at for I a hate little. being sick, Meg. You know that. Of course you do. Show me a guy that doesn't take to his bed with the sniffles, and I'll show you a woman. Oh, that's, that's very cute. Is that your professional <laughs> opinion? Personal. Too many brothers. Yeah. Hey, Paul came by the farm a little while ago looking for you. Yeah, he uh, found me. He just left. Everything okay? Okay is a relative term. Yeah, listen, I don't know what's going on with the two of you, but for what it's worth, I kind of agree with him about Craig. I'm not you two. Oh, do you want my history with the guy? Not particularly. It seems the whole town seems to have a history with Craig. <laughs> yes, they do. And none of it any good. Well, you know what? I don't have any complaints, at least not today. He's done one good deed for me. He got sick and he drove me home. And hung out here until Paul got home? Yes, and I was grateful. What, what about Paul? Was, was he grateful? No, Paul gave me a lecture on Craig's ulterior motives. Good. You know, I can handle him, Jack. I wish Paul and you would just give me a little credit. What, you, you want credit? Go to a bank, Meg. 
But the next time you get sick, you're better off having a rattlesnake nurse you back to health and end up grateful to Craig Montgomery. So you and Paul on the same side. Planets make life. This isn't funny, Meg. But you're smiling. Because I want to believe that you can handle yourself. Hmm. Poor innocent me. Okay, well, you see, Carly thought she could handle herself too. A few years back, Craig was really into her, and everywhere she turned, there he was, and he made damn sure I knew about it. Does that sound familiar to you? Yeah, a little. And you and Paul, you're fighting about it? A little. Everything Craig does has a purpose, right down to what he orders for breakfast. I swear to you, the nicest of gestures turns into a knife in the middle of your back if you're not careful. Mm. Two men I love tell me the same thing. Well, maybe it's time to start listening. I am listening. It sounds that life is one sick game for Craig, and this game is about to end. My work is done here. I have to get to the hospital. Come on, I'll drive you. No, I'll drive myself. You sure? You know what? I hate being played. The question you have to ask yourself is, what are you going to do about it? Maybe I'll play Craig instead of having him call all no, the shots. Don't waste your time. Just steer clear of the guy. You know what? If Craig knows what's good for him, he'll steer clear of me. Come on. How long has he been here? It, it doesn't matter. I know it's a bad time right now. No, no, it's a good time. Let's do it. Why would Craig Montgomery want to kill you? Good to see you up. Get out of here, Craig. I couldn't help overhearing. Yeah, well, your daughter and Mr. Donovan here seem to think that you're tampered with his brains. That's absurd. You were making threats earlier about people getting hurt if I went through with my testimony. Oh, my God, what happened? Craig tampered with Dusty's brakes. Where were you before the accident, Mr. Donovan? Java. What time? Eight. I left by nine. Oh, that proves I have nothing to do with it. I was with Meg Snyder. Isn't that right, Meg? 